I'm Jane Velez Mitchell with Jane Unchained, and tonight I am talking to Beth Karras, former prosecutor and the founder uh, of KarrasOnCrime.com, an amazing site that goes in depth into trials. Beth Karras is in Phoenix, Arizona, and she is all in on the Jody Arias penalty phase retrial. There is breaking news. Beth Karras, uh, bring us up to date on the breaking news in this case. Well, the Court of Appeals issued its opinion yesterday, laying out the reasons why Jody Arias cannot take the stand in a closed courtroom. And we didn't know why the trial judge had said, you, the public, members of the media, can't be here when she testifies. We didn't know because the judge had made that decision in a closed proceeding, but we learned in the opinion that Jody Arias was getting death threats and she was fearful that if she had to basically look out into a courtroom with members of the media, whom she knew would be reporting what she was saying, that she couldn't think clearly and give the proper answers for her mitigation phase. This is what's going on now, the mitigation, the penalty phase. Well, let me say this. We know she's a master manipulator. Is it possible she manipulated the judge? Because frankly, I don't buy her cockamamie story. She's appeared on national television several times uh, doing interviews from behind bars. She's behind bars. She's got uh, you know, the powers of being watching her. A lot of people have gotten threats in this case, including myself. Uh, because I wrote that book, Exposed the Secret Life of Jody Arias, which was not particularly kind to Jody Arias because she's a pathological liar and a killer. So why would the judge buy this? You know, I really don't know why she bought it. It is her first capital case, and I think Judge Stevens is being super cautious because she just wants to make sure that Jody Iris's rights are protected and no judge wants their cases reversed on appeal. And we know that if Jody Iris gets death, the case is automatically appealed to the Supreme Court and it will be scrutinized like no other case. All death cases get that, get that kind of scrutiny on appeal. But the Court of Appeals, the middle level court in Arizona said, no, no, no. You don't testify in open court at your guilt phase, and we know she was on the stand for 18 days. And then at the penalty phase say, oh, you better close the doors because now I'm fearful. It's like, no. However, the court did say that the trial judge, Stevens, had come up with a less restrictive remedy to kind of appease Jody Arias, but not lock us out completely, not a total blackout of information by saying, the general public and the media have to go to a different courtroom, an overflow room, and watch on closed circuit TV. I still don't like that because I like to see, be in the courtroom for the ambiance, looking at the jury, seeing how you know things are unfolding in the courtroom. But at least if she decides to take the stand again, we'll be in an overflow room, watching on closed circuit TV. It's very good quality cameras uh, that they have in the courthouse. And we'll hear her and we'll see her on the stand so we'll know the content. Uh, I have to get to the other big news. The porn purportedly discovered on victim Travis Alexander's computer. The defense has made this a huge issue, asking for the case to be thrown out or at least death, the death penalty to be taken off the table. And uh, there are a number of reports, and you're quoted in some of them, uh, but some opinionators are suggesting that uh, she could ultimately possibly walk because there was a woman who killed uh, was involved and convicted in the murder of her son. And that woman, because of a prosecutorial misconduct that was alleged, ended up having her conviction overturned. What's going on? Yeah, I, you know, I think that I was maybe, my comments were taken a little bit out of context in regards to that. You're talking about Deborah Milkey's case here in Arizona. Uh, and that not only was she, um, was her case reviewed but and she was getting a new trial she appealed that and just learned that her case is being thrown out altogether after but she spent 23 years on death row i had said that if jody arias gets death this case is going to get scrutinized and could very well come back for a new trial not walk free a new trial because of the pornography issue the first jury didn't hear that 
I personally don't think the first jury would have cared one way or the other if they heard about pornography on Travis's computer. It doesn't really go to Jody Arias's guilt or not. I don't think it would have made a difference. It might make a difference to a jury, though, sitting in judgment of life or death. Well, we know the split last year was eight for death and four for life, and it might have been a different split. Okay, but if there was a cover-up, and that's a big if, but that's what the defense is alleging, I want to ask you about that because that's prosecutorial misconduct. Could that upend the trial? And the other thing is, what kind of porn was found on Travis's computer? Because, you know, she had made the allegation that she saw him uh, pleasuring himself to photos of children, and that was a big shocker, outraged uh, the victim's family. So, was it just porn like? unfortunately or fortunately however you feel about it millions and millions of americans men watch or was it the kind of porn that was truly deviant in the sense that it involved minors well the hearing is completed the judge hasn't made a decision but the investigation is continuing so we don't really know all that information we know that the defense is claiming and we're going to hear this in january at the trial the defense is claiming that the user of that computer not only looked at adult pornography, but child as well. Teen sex and child pornography. They made that uh, accusation in court. They had a witness on the stand who said the user actually typed in words, teen and sex and, and that kind of stuff. So we're talking definitely child porn within the definition under 18. Now, I don't know if it's prepubescent, but it's teenagers. It could be 16, 17 is what they're saying. We don't know what the state's going to come up with. They're still doing their own investigation, taking another look, because why this wasn't found the first time, I don't know. Well, Beth, I have but, to ask you this. Is it for sure that there was this was porn of some sort found on the computer? Has the prosecution and or the detectives who investigated this case admitted that? Well, one detective who testified last week did admit that a porn site, don't know if it's teen or adult, was on it. At least a description of the porn site was on this image of the hard drive, one. Now, the defense expert says there are thousands and thousands, and there were 19 scrubbers to clean the internet history on this, uh, on the, um, they were looking at images, uh, clones and images made from the hard drive. And, um, I learned over the weekend from one of Travis's friends, you know him, Taylor Searle. I talked to Taylor. He did not testify last year. I don't know if he's going to testify this year. He hasn't testified yet. That Travis hired him in 2007 to scrub the porn off the computer. Whoa! But that was the year before Travis was killed. Well, but... And according to Taylor, it was Travis's roommate who was using it to look for porn. Uh, and he cleaned it. So we don't know if you can't, you can clean the internet history, but the registry still shows it. There are still ways that you can see, you know, what the, the activity on the computer. And we don't know, first of all, it's the same computer, but it was a laptop. And also, um, we don't know if the defense is claiming that there were sites accessed after 2007, which would be after Taylor Searle scrubbed it. Hmm. Well, I mean, this is bombshell stuff that you're reporting, and it seems like this trial is in chaos. I know you're very busy. My final question before we wrap up, I had wondered when I heard about this penalty phase retrial whether the prosecution would snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Prosecutor Juan Martinez did a great job, uh, proved to the world that she's a uh, sadistic killer. Uh, she was convicted. I think there was tremendous likelihood she would have spent the rest of her life behind bars. Is there a buzz around the courthouse that given all these allegations now of prosecutorial misconduct or police misconduct and scrub files, yada, 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 that maybe this was a big mistake? Well, I'm not hearing around the courthouse, but in the community, I do talk to people and People are, are most concerned that she's, a, a, and, and are happy she's a convicted murderer. In other words, that's the big verdict. And at this point, almost $3 million have been spent. We don't know what the county attorney spent, but $3 million um, through whatever, the defense and, and et cetera, 
it's a lot of taxpayer money. And, you know, people would just as soon have this case over with. No, so I've talked to people who still want to see her get death, the woman in the movie line last weekend, and others who say, you know what, let's just get rid of this case. Let's just send her to state prison enough already. Give her life without parole. So in my experience here in talking to people, and it's really anecdotal, uh, people are, are split. And, and I've been told that it's it, it, it can benefit the prosecutor who's a politician and may not want to lose constituents and votes if he takes death off the table. But people might say, you know what? You had the courage to do it. Let's just get rid of this case. We're sick of her. We have Jody fatigue. Okay, and I have one final, final question, if you'll indulge me. Uh, I have a thought that perhaps since the judge would, the last thing she would want is for this case to be overturned on appeal and a new trial ordered, is it possible that having heard all this testimony about purported porn that may may have been deleted from the victim's computer, that she would decide, well, let me preempt that by just taking death off the table, and the scrutiny therefore would be lower than a, than if she were sentenced to death, and just sentence her to life without parole and end this now? Could she do that, Beth? Yes, she could do it, and that's what she has taken under advisement. I do not think she will do it, but she could do it. And I forgot to answer one last question. I know we're running out of time, but you did ask me um, about whether or not, I think you asked whether or not these al there's any uh, merit to the allegations that there was um, some sort of intentional conduct on the part of the state and the police. And right. it, it, it appears from the three days at the hearing that nothing was intentional. There were some alterations made to the hard drive because it was awakened out of sleep mode by Detective Flores when they found the body in the house and they were collecting things and he tapped the space bar and, and it woke up and downloaded some information or whatever, it overwrote. And so it's not in the exact condition it was in at the time Travis died. And then a year later, when all the lawyers were looking at it, prosecutors and defense lawyers, and it was just sort of inadvertent, maybe not incompetence, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I don't want to insult anyone, but they really should have had a forensic uh, computer examiner with them when they were handling the computer, and they didn't. So nothing was intentional, though. Well, I, I think, I know you think she won't do it, but if I were her, I might decide, let's end this thing. It's dragging on, we're losing jurors. Who knows when it's gonna end? I can make the decision that she goes to prison for life without the possibility of parole. Uh, that way I'm preempting any possibility, any real possibility that this case is gonna be overturned. Uh, if I were her, that's probably what I would do, but I'm not generally even though I think this woman is a despicable killer and a, a, a sociopath or more, um, I, I'm just not a proponent of the death penalty. I don't believe you solve killing with more killing. And so that's my philosophy. But I want to thank Beth Karras of Karras on Crime. And for all you watching, go to Karras on Crime. Sign up, get all the details. You'll get an education in the law from one of the, top experts in America. Beth, thank you for taking the time.